Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning, St. Mary. Good morning to the wonderful team of the Maryland County Recreation. I'd like to take this opportunity to welcome each and every one of you to our very first centenarian celebration. I think that in and of itself deserves a round of applause. Thank you all so very much. My name is Tiana Abraham Smith, and I'll be your mistress of ceremony this beautiful morning. And we are here to delight, here to entertain, but most importantly, we are here to honor each and every one of our centenarians. I recently discovered that we have over 7,000 years of knowledge in this room. Can you imagine? That in and of itself is a feat. One gentleman said he believes this may be the Guinness Book of World Records of having so many people, a hundred or better, in one room. So I'm definitely going to look that up and ask my good friend Google, because everything is true on Google, if that is indeed the case. I went around to a couple of the tables and, and spoke to some of our esteemed guests, and I asked them what was the secret to living and thriving at 100 years old. Mr. Snyder said, just live one day at a time. Look forward to what we have next to come. And then I went over and I saw this beautiful woman named Mrs. Goodman. And I said, Mrs. Goodman, why do I know you? Oh, I've been around a lot. <laughs> Pretty good response, right? And I said, well, what's your secret to living to almost 102? She said, well, it's always being there. And if you see anyone who, who may be looking, you tell them to fall my way because I'll catch them. <laughs> Isn't that correct, Mrs. Bidman? She's back there in her safety. So I don't want to take up too much of your time. I'm here to introduce our next person on the program, who's a wonderful human being. I've gone to her and anything. Ask for her help, and she's always been right there with the answer. Her name is Adrian Clutter, and she's our division for me. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Tiana, for that wonderful introduction. Wow. It's so great to be here. Dear honored guests, esteemed attendees. We're gathered here today to celebrate a truly remarkable occasion, the recognition of 76 centenarians in our community. It's a rare privilege to be in the presence of so many individuals who have lived over 100 years, and we are honored to pay tribute to each and every one of them. Today, we are privileged to have 40 individuals in our midst who will be over 101 this year. But wait, 12 here today are already 100 and will be 101 this year. And 24 individuals are 100 years old or soon to turn 100 this year. Our oldest centenarians are at table 14. They are 106 years old. Soon to turn 107, I would like to recognize Mrs. Louise Diver, born June 1916. Mr. Al Senu, born October 1916. Additionally, we have birthday celebrations today at Table 5. Happy birthday to Bernadine Trumbull and Malvin Kleiner. Happy birthday. We do want to take this opportunity to express our heartfelt appreciation for the extraordinary lives of our honorees. Each of these individuals has lived through momentous historical events, witnessed great advances in technology and medicine, and has contributed 
and measurably to their families and communities. This special occasion makes me think of the African philosophy and word Ubuntu, which is understood as I am because you are, or also I am because of who we all are, which is really our sense of self is shaped by the relationships of those who we encounter. So without you, there is no me. Our sense of self is shaped by those relationships and those people who have paved the way that works. Today, we recognize and celebrate the resilience, the courage, and the strength of our centenarian honorees and the incredible stories that they carry with them. We also pay tribute to their families who provided them with love, support, and care throughout their lives. As we celebrate this remarkable milestone, we also acknowledge the challenges that our centenarians have faced throughout their lives, including adversity, loss, and hardship, and we honor their resilience and their unwavering spirit. And we celebrate the many ways in which we may have enriched the lives of our family, friends, and our community. On behalf of everyone gathered here today, I would like to extend our sincere congratulations to all 76 centenarians being recognized and to express our deep appreciation for their contributions to our society. And so let us all join together to celebrate these remarkable individuals and let us honor their legacy of courage, strength, and compassion. Congratulations to our honorees, and we offer our heartfelt gratitude for you being with us today. I'd like to take a quick opportunity to thank the staff of Montgomery County Recreation. And our partner and collaborators, the Social Security Administration. Thank you again, and I'll turn it over to our host, Tiana Abram. All right, Amy, right, thank you so much for those wonderful remarks. As we prepare for our speaker from the Social Security Administration, LaQuinta Maltry, as she make her way up, I'd like to just mention a few things that our um, research about turning one hundred. And our good friend, everyone's favorite TV doctor, Dr. Oz, correct? <laughs> he mentioned a few things that would help us to live to be 100. And three of the things was to have a piece of dark chocolate every day, take a 10 minute walk, and my most favorite, have a small glass of wine. So, according to Dr. Oz, those are the three key things we need to do in order to live to 100 or better. So at this time, I'd like to welcome Mrs. Longstreet from Social Security Administration. Good morning, good morning, good morning, and thank you so much. I am Laquita Moultrie, Deputy Area Director for the Social Security Administration in Area 3, which is the National Capital Area. We are part of the Philadelphia region, and my office oversees and supports of 14 local offices in the Washington, D.C. area, including two of the offices here in Montgomery County, uh, namely Rockville and Silver Spring. And today with me, I have Mr. Thomas Wilkins, who is the assistant district manager for the Silver Springs office. Mr. Wilkins. Thank you. Thank you. So on behalf of all of us at Social Security, we extend our appreciation to Montgomery County Department of Recreations for inviting us to be a part of this historic event. Most of all, we thank you, our beloved centenarians and family members for allowing us to serve. It was Mahatma Gandhi who once said, the best way to find yourself is to lose yourself in the service of others. And we at the Social Security Administration have certainly found our way, and it has been our pleasure serving you all these years. The Social Security Administration team is honored to be here on this special day. Who would have thought to tell you 100 years ago that you would be here at this event? 
It is about 75 of you here, I understand. And that is basically 7,500 years of unique experience, successful professionals, and personal stories to share. And of course, I'm sure many challenges you've overcome. That's that funny man, but it's about, about 7,500 years. This is an incredible milestone. And I am sure of the family members who are present here today, they can testify about the love, the care, the fun and wisdom you have shared with them and with the world through your 100 years or more. And as you continue making history at this first centenarian event in Montgomery County, I'd like to ask you a question, and Ms. Tiana asked that question earlier. What is your secret? You certainly hold the secret of life. I'd like to share with you a little piece of history. Do any of you recognize the name Ida May Fuller? Ida May Fuller. Anybody recognize that name? You do. Awesome. Well, do you know what you and she have in common? Ms. Ida May Fuller. Ms. Ida May Fuller was the first person ever to collect monthly social security benefits. <laughs> So we know that's not one thing you don't you have in common because you weren't the first ones to receive benefits. But I tell you what you do have in common. Ms. Ida Mae Fuller lived to be 100 years old, just like you. Ida Mae Fuller was born on September 6, 1874, and she died on January 27, 1975. She attended school in Bloodhole, Vermont, and graduated from Black River Academy, where her contemporaries at the academy included Calvin Coolidge. Now, do you recognize that name? Of course you do. He was the 30th president of the United States. After her graduation, Ms. Fuller became a school teacher in Ludlow. Now, do we have any school teachers in the house? There you go. Awesome, awesome, awesome. During her retirement, Ms. Fuller collected a total of $22,888.92 in Social Security benefits. As monthly benefits increased in the 1950s and the 1960s, Ms. Fuller typically received the first check issued for that amount, which was usually the subject of news reports. And of course, it still is based on the huge COLA we received this past year. Is that right? That was a big one. When Ms. Fuller received the first check following a September 1965 increase in monthly benefits, it arrived with a letter from President Lyndon Johnson, who also called Ms. Fuller to extend good wishes on her birthday. Many things have changed in the last 100 years. And certainly, many have changed since Ida Mae Fuller received her first Social Security check. Now, you are enjoying the convenience of direct deposit. You can manage your benefits from home through a My SSA online account. You can look at your payment history, request information such as the benefit verification letter, an SSA 1099 for your taxes. And you can even request a new Medicare card or even change your address online. All from the comfort of your home with your feet up, drinking your coffee or wine, whatever it is you have. Now, I hope all of you have a My SSA online account. And if you don't, family members, we have some work to do. Congratulations again. And I want to leave you with a quote by Mrs. Eleanor Roosevelt, who just happens to be a member of my sorority, Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated, and the wife of President, the 32nd President of our country, and to whom we are thankful today as the Social Security Act was enacted under his administration back on August 14, 1935. The objective of the act was to provide economic security for the elderly, the poor, and the sick. And Mrs. Roosevelt wrote on her footprints from the heart, 
Beautiful young people are accidents of nature, but beautiful old people are works of art. Certainly all of you are works of art. Congratulations and thank you for 7,500 years of life well lived. And don't forget to share your longevity secrets with us. Again, I am excited to be here today. But even more than that, I am honored to be in your presence. Thank you. Beautiful words of encouragement. I tell you, I can't wait to reach the 100 Club because I want to be the of America. One day. At this time, I'd like to dismiss my housekeeping note. You all received the little orange, I believe, and the green, the little mini tablets, little pieces of paper. It, it corresponds with your meal. If you could just take that out and put whatever meal you're having, the card in front of you, so that our wonderful servers know who gets what, that would be great. Also, at this time, I'd like to take the opportunity to thank some very important people who are here in the room. That would be all of the family, the friends, and the let's get here today. I just want you all to know I'll make an answer. All right. Because I could speak louder, but that's what I'm trying to do. <laughs> I just want you all to know all of the family, friends, and loved ones. I want you to know that we understand how it can be sometimes. And that your ability to get your loved one here today was no easy feat. But we know that you take pride in bringing he or she here with us today. So at this time, I think that the caregivers and the loved ones deserve a rousing round of applause. Because we can help you to make it our too. And we thank you all for kindly. I'd also like to take this opportunity to have our director come up. Ms. Robin Riley, please put your hands together for our director of the And this is a picture of Robin. She's a dog lover, just like me. So all the dog lovers in the house, I had to give a shout out for that. Thank you, Robin. Thank you, everyone, for being here today. This is a remarkable day for all of us. Uh, I think when Tiana brought this idea together, we had no idea that it would look like this today. So thank you for just all of your work to help get everybody here today. Um, I also want to um, share with you as you leave today, we're going to have some small tokens and gifts that we'll be bringing to your table for each of the seven events. We'll have a small, uh, small token and gift that the rec department put together and also the state security office added. So we'll bring those to your table along with the certificate to recognize that you came today. Um, it's a remarkable stand in front of everyone here today. Um, it reminds me of, of the work that we do, even with young people, um, and, and, and the travel of life. It all resolves around resiliency, tenacity, determination, and grit. And even today, listening to people that are 100, 101, 104, that still want to get their nails done or swim, um, I think it's remarkable. So thank you for being here. Um, at this time, I'd also like to acknowledge that we have some really um, special guests that are here with us today. We have um, Jenny Escobar, who's with Council Member of uh, Sales Office. We have Krista Burton from U.S. Representative Jamie Raston's office. We have uh, David Andrews, who's the chair of the Commission on Aging. And the fucking human services who's on route to its final. So I want to thank you for all your all your years of service um, and dedication to the aging and disability community is, is definitely valuable. Um, and so at this time, I'd also like to uh, introduce another uh, special guest, my boss, the county executive, Mark Lynch. So you all are inspirational. I've been at the 73, and my goal is 100 or more. And it's really good to see people who've already done this. 
Um, somebody mentioned earlier the record from us sent in the largest gathering of centenarians. Apparently, we sent it today. <laughs> I checked two sources. I looked it up through Google because that's supposed to be just information. And then I used AI, which God knows what that is. And, and what it came back with was 2016 in Australia, 45 centenarians gathered. 45. Australia is bigger than America. That's just physically what population was. So it's astounding that 75 or 76 people have gathered here today. So whoever likes to write into things like get it's book and old records, take the picture and send them the information because you all succeeded. So first of all, congratulations on being the largest gathering of centenarians ever, anywhere. It's pretty good. Um, I'm really you know, happy to be the county executive of Montgomery County, and I want to thank you all. Because um, during COVID, which we all know is incredibly difficult for people, the senior population in Montgomery County was the largest vaccinated population in the county. The highest percentage went to you all. You were the first person to get back, people to get vaccinated. Almost all of you got vaccinated. You got vaccinated regardless of your political party. Apparently, you valued life enough to know that politics is trivial compared to the pleasure of waking up in the morning and being with people you love. And the fact that you got that vaccine would really talk to everybody else. So I want to just thank you for being willing to get the vaccines and keep yourselves as safe as you could possibly keep yourself. I want to thank the recreation department for putting this event on. This is a big deal. And thank you for doing it this year. And I will assume this becomes an annual thing. So uh, you guys can look forward to coming back to this over and over again. Another good reason to wake up in the morning because we're the next year you can be back here again. And I want to also thank our senior department and uh, Dr. Bernal for all the work she's done. I know she's retiring. Thank you. Um, but your dedication, and your commitment to serving the seniors in Montgomery County has really been, you know, steadfast and consistent. I was glad to be able to elevate you to that position. I'm sorry to see you go. Um, I want you to know how much you're appreciated. I'm sure everybody in this room appreciates what you've been able to do. And I want to thank our Commission on Aging because we continue to think about how do we improve life for the aging population in Montgomery County? How do we continue to provide transportation services? How do we continue to provide services in our recreation centers and our senior centers that serve this population? How do we keep you active and engaged? So that you're not wondering what's going to happen during the day, but you know you can go someplace, you can see friends, you can participate in activities. I've noticed how many of you walked in here unassisted, not a small number of people. And that says a lot about just your commitment to stay active and stay vital. And so you're doing a remarkable job. Uh, you really are inspirational. I think to be in a room like this and see what you've accomplished is a message to other people that this is attainable. And you can attain this with a good quality of life. And that's really important. So being able to be reach this milestone and have the quality of life you have to be able to come out here today it says a lot about you. It says a lot about the county and all these foresight and the department's foresight to put on an event like this. So I just want to thank you all for coming. It's been a treat for me. And I look forward to talking to you. And thank you for being smart. Smart enough to take care of yourself when a lot of other people were doubting it. You went, you knew what you needed to do, you did it. You're still standing. It has to do with what you're willing to do. So thank you very much. Thank you, Smart. Um, I know that house could be a good bit. I just want to know if you could do this good bit. great. Um, you all receive a registration form for just the centenarians who fill out. We have a very special gift for each centenarian. In addition to the other gifts that we have for you today, you will receive a special recreation pass um, once you fill that out. So once that's complete, the staff person who is sitting at your table will take that from you and ensure to get that where it needs to be able to ensure that you your pass. I'd like to take this opportunity to introduce our keynote speaker. 
Dr. Tabasi Majinik has had both a personal and professional passion in care giving recipient in Alzheimer's disease and related dementia since she was a caregiver for her own grandparents. A native Marylander, Dr. Majinik received her Bachelor of Science degree from the University of Maryland, Baltimore County, concentrating in an interdisciplinary approach to neurodegenerative wow, said it right, disorders of the aging. She then gained expertise in pathology, imaging, and biology of dementia from both preclinical and clinical perspectives in East Texas, where she earned her PhD from Baylor College of Medicine in transitional biology and molecular medicine. She then returned to Maryland to complete a fellowship at the University of Maryland School of Pharmacy, researching care management decisions with caregivers and individuals with dementia. Her research philosophy and body of work is currently helping to provide an evidence base to evaluate both health services and social programs tailored to the needs of both caregivers and their care recipients in the integrated community. She recently completed her MAGS degree from the Erickson School and co-taught one of the classes while doing it well. Dr. Majid is a member of the Alzheimer's and Disease Disparities Engagement Network, convening by two activities against Alzheimer's, and an appointed member of the Maryland Governor's Council of Alzheimer's Disease and Related Disorders, which contributes to the development and implementation of the Maryland State Plan. She is absolutely thrilled to be here today to be your keynote speaker. So please put your hands together for Dr. Tabasso Mitchell. So much. I have to lower the microphone as well. I am sure it's going to be So I am not going to talk about any of my research. Today is about you, and I'm here to celebrate each and every one of you. Please don't stop eating. Please continue to eat yourself. We encourage ourselves. Lunch is very important. I don't want to stand between you and lunch. So it is my honor to speak to you today and to obviously to celebrate an incredible milestone of your 100 years on this beautiful earth. I must admit I feel a bit silly standing here because I'm only in my 30s and I don't have half as much wisdom as everyone out there. But sometimes, uh, as you know, when you're young, you're asked to be braver than you think you can be. So I'm going to try to do that and give it a shot. So I hope you'll bear with me. So the first thing I'm going to do is ask you if you have any wrinkles at the table. Anyone have any wrinkles? Yeah. So when we ask, just a couple, just a couple hands going up. So when we ask ourselves what wrinkles are and how they are formed, I want to talk to you a little bit about that and then how do you think about them differently? Because in our society, we really think about wrinkles negatively. But what I want to show you today is how beautiful, and as the previous speaker said, works of art, they can come together to form. So there's three things you need to have wrinkles, you know. Number one, you need to be exposed to sunlight. That's number one. You have to be exposed to sunlight. So we have got these beautiful windows, take your time to go outside. And mammals to a human are hairless, pretty much, right? You don't have as much hair as other mammals. So you have to be exposed to sunlight on areas of your skin that don't have any hair, like your face, like your hands, like your feet, where we have the most wrinkles. So that's number one. So all of you have really accomplished that. Obviously, you have been exposed to sunlight. The second thing is that you have to live long enough to experience the changes in your skin, right? So 100 plus years that works out because the collagen moves less in your skin when you live that long. And the third thing is you have to be exposed to what are called free radicals in the environment. And I like to think about these as all of the things in our environment that may not be familiar to us, but we welcome into our bodies. So those things all have to come together to actually have wrinkles be present on yourself. But it's a representation of the resilience of being a human being. And one of the things we know about older people is that they are very content. You as elders and your family members see that you're very content just to be. As adults, we like to do things. We like to have our checklist. We check everything off. We're doing this and we're doing that. But older 
individuals, wiser individuals are happy to just be. And the better you can embrace that, the longer you can live happily. So I'd like you to think about as you leave here today what your favorite place to be is, and I encourage you to be there with your family. Mine is definitely outside, surrounded by a tree, flames, birds, and being with those who you love or connecting to nature is so essential to us as human beings. We see that it's kids as well. So I don't know if any of you are around young children, but I have a young toddler, believe it or not, at home, and he is in the what I call thing of wonder of being. Everything is amazing. Trucks, planes, birds, cars, trees. Ooh, ah, 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 I think when we think about that from a young person's eyes, we can also think about it from an elder individual's eyes. That the world is incredible, and we've seen so much of it that the being aspect of ourselves needs to be nourished. And I hope that you really take the time in your celebrations to do that. So the last piece I want to share with you before we dive into the main course of lunch is just the three areas in which you as an older individual have shown us how to live. There are lots of things that we know and lots of identities that we understand elders to have. And I wanted to think out have us all think about it, each of our tables which would be applied. So the first one is called the peacemaker. Some of us as we get older and are 100 plus, are peacemakers, not just within our family, but within ourselves and within the world. And oftentimes, I found with others in my family, we go to them when there's conflict so that they can help us agree to peace, not the other way around. And so, if you're a peacemaker or your loved one is a peacemaker, can I just see if you relate to that? Please share your hands. If your loved one really relates to being a peacemaker or your gentle individual, there's plenty of those around as well. My grandmother, for example, was a peacemaker in her family. She has seven kids, nine plus grandchildren. So there's a lot of areas where people can get upset and she do the conflict resolution part of it as she got older and the peacemaker in her family. The second one is the wisdom giver, which we've heard a lot of wisdom already. There's lots of wisdom around the room. Not only is the idea of wisdom not new, but you are the essence of that wisdom because with age comes creativity. So I would like to share one small story with you and then we'll get to the final identity piece. The small story of a creative wisdom giver is we had an elder in our family who had arrived from a little bomb flight. And there was a no story when he arrived at the airport. And his his um, you know, children called and said, Look, you know, Dad, we can't come pick you up at the airport. It's snowing, there's snow on the ground, and we just can't make it. You guys are gonna have to stay at the airport for a couple of hours. Now, these elders are very creative, very bright, very smart. What do you think they did? They said, you know what? Don't worry about it, kiddo, we'll be there. They're like, what do you mean that? Like, don't get on the road, don't drive the car, don't do anything crazy. No, 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 we'll be there. And then he asked a very strange question. He said, do you have dinner ready? And then he said, like, no, Dad, we were just going to come and pick you up. And then he was going to do it. We'll be there and we'll bring dinner. Like, well, what happened? So what he did is he called his local place that was about 10 minutes from the airport. He had someone take him there, a cab driver from the airport, who walked in and he said to the guy behind the register, he said, I would like to order a large cheese pizza and I would like to give you 10 extra dollars because you are going to drive us and the pizza to this time. How about that? There's some creativity and some wisdom. These are the types of things as we grow, we don't think about them because while we have so many life experiences, these connections are obvious to you, and they are not obvious to those of us who are even more younger. So we have mixed with the givers in the audience as well. And then finally, and this is the piece we're really here to celebrate today, is that you all have light trees. And I know, I know that all of the partners here and all of the celebrators are really honoring this legacy of which you connect to those who came after you, who came before you, who you did recently. All of us are part of the grand legacy. I myself am 
as the granddaughter of an orphan of immigrants, of many of you traveled across thousands of miles to be here today, whether it's even to face this country or you were born here, it's woven into the landscape and the wrinkles. And all the stories pass by that are embedded within us to create these legacies, and we're building off of what's being like for us. So you really want to celebrate your legacy today, share them, spread them, create them for sure. And I just want to leave you with a small um, poem and a definition that might change the way we think about elderhood, which is that an elder, our elders who are here today, is a person who is still growing. You're still learning. You're still with the potential whose life continues to have within it. On your plus years and beyond, you promise and connect to the future. You are in pursuit of happiness. You deserve and have joy and pleasure. And these are your rights. These are your rights for us to honor. And whose work it is, your work. Your homework and your work every day is to think aside to bring them from your own life experience and things you have done. So, happy birthday! Congratulations! Whatever the celebration is, I really am extremely honored to be here. Thank you for having this wonderful celebration and bringing the joy. Okay, if you want to make you some rest of our friends about some of your wonderful speech, words of encouragement, and I'm looking at all of my wrinkles a little closer now. So I want to thank you for that. You all enjoy your lunch. We're going to have some wonderful music from yesterday by DJ Tiger, who's been working at many of the senior centers for multiple years, bringing us the best of the oldies and some new stuff here. So if you'd like to get up and shake a leg, we got an instrument right here in the center. But if you want to just sit back and tap your toes, that's okay too. Enjoy your lunch and we'll be back with those in March. DJ Tiger, take it away.